working, man. I know what my audience like. I did some independent films with Master P. A lot of those movies did really well. Mm -hmm. I'm ambitious, I'm a hustler. I have my own lane. That's the thing about comedy. You wake up every day, you don't know if you're funny that day. I know what my audience like. I did some independent films with Master P. A lot of those movies did really well. Mm -hmm. I'm ambitious, I'm a hustler. I have my own lane. That's the thing about comedy. You wake up every day, you don't know if you're funny that day. Yes, indeed. Okay. Hey, guess what, y'all? Y'all know what time it is? New time and all that. But uh, it's time for uh, Let's Go Live with Lamar King. I'm Lamar King. We are now live. So let's go. What's good with y'all, man? It's on a Wednesday, man. They gave us another one, man. We made it to the middle of the week. Yeah, surprise, surprise. Come on in. Have a seat. Sit down. Don't touch nothing. Good to see y'all, man. This is something like a podcast, something like this is a crossover between podcast and live show. Hilarious commentary, trending topics, celebrity guests, and interesting people. We do this Monday and Wednesday, 8 p.m., Friday at 6, East Coast time. Shout out to everybody watching on the West Coast right now. I see you. And worldwide. And worldwide. Shout out to uh, the chat, the YouTube chat only. If you're in the Facebook chat, I'm not acknowledging you or recognizing you. The YouTube chat, also known as the Peanut Gallery, uh, otherwise known as the nigga section. Good to see ya. All right. Uh, make sure you visit our longest running sponsor, DrunkenFruit.com. Spell it right. Drunken Fruit. Uh, and Instagram at Drunken Fruit. Spell it right. They got some specials going on right now. Right now. Good, man. 
I didn't put the number on the screen, man. We was, was going to be a fun show today, man. We're going to talk some shit, chew some spit. You know what I mean? 765 Let's Go One is the number. It's a live show. 765 538 7461. I'll talk a little bit uh, uh mental health, Simone Biles and Olympics and all that. Uh, Ashton Kutcher and his wife don't bathe and all that. And then we got a special guest. It, what? You haven't heard? You haven't heard? That was like big news yesterday. That was, that was, that was big news. Ashton Kutcher and uh, his wife talking about they don't really they don't really do much bathing, and they don't make their kids bathe neither. And also, uh, I'm gonna talk about the whole Sabone Biles thing. I, I got a I got an unpopular opinion on it, man. I, I got I got uh, I got a theory. So I need y'all with me. I got a theory. Is, is, we'll talk about it a little later, but I, I, I got a real theory and it, it's kind of, it's kind of heavy. You, you might not, you know, you might not be in favor of it, but I got a theory. Um, but Dominique Dawes came out today. If you, you remember her from 96 and 2000 Olympics and made it, made a very powerful, powerful statement. And I heard her on a radio program when I was coming in, um, this evening, actually I sat in the car and listened to the, the whole thing. Very powerful. I mean, just pa- very, very, very powerful. Like she really laid it out there and uh, pointed some fingers and 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 laid out some names. And uh, we're gonna talk about that a little bit later too, as well. And 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 whatever you want to talk about, because that's that's what we do here. All right, uh, good to see y'all. Let me see what y'all talking about in here before we keep it moving and bring in our guests. Um, good to see. You. Oh yeah, uh, shout out to our executive producer down the hall, Mr. Clarkson in Studio G. Back from uh, his trip. Still uh, coming up on his uh, dissertation party. He's doing a dissertation party because he's defending his dissertation like very shortly. So there's going to be a a dissertation viewing pay-per-view situation coming up. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, John Watson, our New York bureau chief on remote. All right, let's talk about it real quick, man. I saw saw this uh, the other day. Yeah, Ashton Kutcher. Y'all see this one? Him and uh, Mila, Mila Kunis, Kunis. Two people rich for no reason. Um. Anyway, here's the story, though. Ashton Kutcher and Mila Kunis say that they don't believe in bathing their kids or themselves too much. This is uh, CNN. This is yesterday. It says uh, Ashton and they appeared on an episode of Dax Shepard's, one of his homies, armchair expert podcast and talk and the talk turned to bathing. It's really a non-story, but I just thought it was interesting. Uh, so Shepard's co-host, um, after Shepard told the co-host Monica Padman that using soap every day rids the bodies of natural oils, Kutcher, Kutcher and Kunis agreed, saying they only wash vitals every day. All right, in layman's turn, they only do whore baths every day. Um, the co-host was stunned and was like, well, wait a minute, who taught you not to wash? Kuna said, I didn't have hot water growing up as a child, so I didn't shower very much anyway. Ah, that's, that's really, I don't know. I'll save my thoughts because that's really not an excuse because my mother used to always tell me of stories of them having a, nine kids in a trailer, in a mobile joint, in an outhouse. And I think they bathe every day. Uh, anyway. Uh, that has apparently continued with her and her coaches, two kids, Wyatt six and Dimitri four. I wasn't that parent that bathed my newborns ever. Kuna said, oh, I got to do this again. And now that they're older, they have a system. If you can see the dirt on them, clean them. Otherwise, there's no point. <sighs> Kutcher says he does wash his armpits and crotch daily and nothing ever else ever and has a tendency to throw some water on my face after a workout to get all the salts out. All right. I don't, I don't know if, you know, they were trolling or looking for a viral moment, but I've heard this before about them. So I, I tend to believe it. That's nasty. First off. I think it's unhealthy. And it's unsanitary. I've heard of it. I've heard there are, you know, some communities where that's, you know, I, I think I saw it on National Geographic once, where there's some communities where, if, you know, it's, you to protect your skin, you know, you leave a little dust on it or whatever. I remember watching something like that, but they was in the jungle, okay? It's, it's a little, 
It's different. Like you're, you're civilized. I, I think that's actually the difference between civilized and uncivilized is the, is the bathing. I think it's the bathing. I think that's what makes like literally the definition when you go read what's the difference between civilized and uncivil. I think it's the bathing. I think so. I think it's hygiene. But to say that, uh, all right, you grew up poor. I get it. We got that. I like it. I'll allow it. And we didn't bathe a lot when we were young because, you know, it was just a thing. We didn't have a lot of running water. Okay, I get it. Uh, but you're, you're older now. What they say, you knew better, you do better? Really? And we get called, you know, black folks get called all kind of names. Meanwhile, y'all ain't even washing up out here, man. These people ain't even washing up. That ain't, and then you don't clean your kids. Kids are germ magnets. They are literal dirt balls. So to, to say you, you know, that's just an unhealthy, uh, you know, waiting to happen. It, they ain't built up no kind of immunity to uh, dust, dirt, and grime that much. We haven't, that many generations have not passed when they build up an internal, come on, man, y'all plan. I think they plan. But then again, I believe it. Okay, there, there, there it is. That's what I was looking for. I was going to say some cultures. So uh, Rachel said, when I was studying overseas in Spain, that was normal. They used baby wipes to clean in between bathing. Aha, aha, between bathing. So they may not have bathed often, but they bathe. And then the little sparse wash-ups in between. These two were talking about, they don't even, they don't even, they don't, none of that. They don't do none of that. So the way I got it, the way I was taught, you know, uh, you don't really wash your face every day with soap uh, because it takes away the oils and the moisturizer or whatever. And I, I've heard that, okay? You you take peeling the skin off. But you, you still got to touch it up. You know what I'm saying? I get that. Um, but there's a thing, like, if you if you active and athletic or it's hot and you've been sweating and you got to build up a, like, ball sweat and, and grime, you know what I'm saying? Like you gotta, I think it's, you gotta do more. There's more that you have to do. It's not like jeans. I remember I got older and I read an article <laughs> about white women, uh, unfortunately. And they were saying how, you know, you're not really, you not really supposed to wash denim. I, I had never heard that. Don't wash your jeans. Like maybe twice a year. And I was like, what? Have you heard that? All right, let's go down the hall, Studio G. Mr. Clarkson, what's good with you? Hey, what's going on, bro? Ain't too much. This foolishness. So, you remember when there was this whole thing about people not washing their legs in the shower? I've heard that. I've heard of that. Yeah. So, there's a BuzzFeed story that came out that said that, like, surprisingly, almost like 20% of the people that were asked that they don't wash their legs in the shower. As in, they just right. let the water run, like, scrub. But they let the water and the soap run down. They just don't get down there and, and wash it. Here we go. This is in 2019, and it goes something like this. Um, the question was, do you wash your legs in the shower? About 80% people voted yes, and 20% voted no. And there's, uh, it was uh, 8,000, 8, 8, 8, well, 80, basically over <laughs> a, a lot. Uh, 750,000 people voted in this. And if 20% of these people say no, that's a lot of damn people that's like, yo, yeah. I don't really wash my legs in the shower. So, yo, your legs are there. So you just not going to wash Yeah, them. why you can't just give them a pass one to pass down, you know, just boop, 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 and then whoop, whoop, and then it's over. Like, yeah, you ain't got to scrub the skin off, but how you just going to let them? Because the soap is running down. That's just lazy. That All means right. that means if you don't so, do your legs, then you definitely ain't doing your feet. You're not doing legs, you're not doing feet, and you're not doing, you're not doing butt. Are you just not doing it? I'm not going to believe No, you. I think, I think these people, you're doing butt first. I think you're doing butt first. Really? Well, he says, uh, Aston Kusher says specifically, he does that only. You know, he does, uh, he does nether region only with the soap and the water. So it's quick, right. a quick front, a under, a back. And and then it's a wrap, and then the shower's off. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> right. <laughs> oh. 
Man. I guess my punching my punching issue with this is that with the kids, if you see the dirt, wash it. But what if you can smell them pits? Yeah. You know, oh, like that, geez. Like that go? Yeah. Remember, remember, yeah. remember the sleepovers, man. Or, or, or even if you got kids and you had other kids over the house, man, and you, you be judging by how long that shower be running. You know what I'm saying? You hear? Okay, so I, you're I, like, damn, you just you just lie. went in. You out? You done already, champ? You just went in. I, I ain't gonna lie. So you know, the son had you know that little sleepover with the guys. All right. In my mind, I was like, you know, check your scrutiny. Don't be scrutinized. This when he was a lot younger. One of the participants. He's in there a hot 60 seconds. Oh. I said, I looked, and he was walking out the door. I said, you sure? Yeah. yeah. I, was like, just be, I was like, you know, just be, <laughs> you done, just fam? You don't have home. You, you sure, champ? I was like, you know, just because, you know, you know, it's not home field advantage, you know, I want you to still keep the same practices. Yeah. And he was like, yeah, yeah, I, I saw how long everybody else was in the shower. You know, I I think I should. I was like, all right, there you go. Uh -huh. Good business decision. So Good he went. Business. He went and got it. He gave you a part two. He had to. Oh, right? okay. You know, we you know played basketball. We throw the football around. Everybody was you know right. Yeah, have... I just didn't want him to. I yeah. didn't want him to come out the shower just being wet and still not right. Yeah, you know what I'm yeah, yeah. Terrible, man. So, that was a anyway, te bro. Teacher, that's... teachable moment. <laughs> Teachable moment. It always yeah. is, bro. Yeah. All right, I'm gone. I'm gone. All right, Mr. Clark sitting in Studio G. Yeah, man. I seen somebody said what I. <laughs> uh, uh, she said my my normal joke about the jeans. If your jeans are shiny, like that's that's the worst. I used to have this thing about. I used to say about uh, ironing shiny jeans. You ever ironed shiny jeans? Man, the steam that comes off of that. That's when you know. That's when you know you got you got to throw them joints in the washer. But the article said it was the, the thing that I read it was a few years ago. It was like denim is the way it is and, and to preserve its its appearance and its style and it's, you know, the uh, the shape of it and all that. You don't really wash it, but what, two or three times a year. And I was like, huh? But, but if you're wearing them, if you're wearing them, the skin, leg sweat, air, there's, a, there's hot leg air that's trapped inside you. Or what if, you know, what if you fought uh you know one time one good time and it's traveling down there you know the gas is traveling down your thigh meat to your leg to the to the to the exit way you know to get out your the ankle hole but on the way down it's you know it's in the denim it's in the fabric baby what y'all doing out here nasty all right let's get moving all right real quick um Oh, oh no. Oh, that's a horrible. What is this? Alpha Mama says, I don't even believe you. That This sounds far-fetched. Alpha Mama says, uh, I have a friend who said, come here, let me lick your back. If it's salty, uh, get back in the shower. No. No, I don't even believe that. that don't even, <laughs> you don't know nobody like that. No. I'm not going to take that. All right, let's, oh, oh I'll send you. Y'all be hanging up so fast. We got technology. I can call you back. I'm calling you back. L let's go live. Welcome to the program. SD, what's good with you? Hello. Well, you already moved topics, so I didn't want to. Oh, no. Gonna... You, know, you know how it goes. You talk, we talk about anything. We go back. We move forward. It's all good. Whatever, whatever you need. No, I, I worked with a guy who got Lyme disease because he didn't wash his legs. And I didn't understand it. Um. He told me I, he had a tick that was living on his leg for two days. And I was like, well, how did you not know that? And a couple of years later, I found out, you know, some people don't wash their legs. Oh, and yeah, it was. I, I didn't know. So, yeah. So he had he thing. had a tick and it stayed there and gave him Lyme disease. And the only reason he didn't know is because he does not wash his legs. Yes. The tick was living on his ankle because he would jog through the woods. And yeah, I it's just. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So Did, now he has Lyme disease. Young man. Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. You mean now he has, is no cure for Lyme disease? No. Once you have Lyme disease, it's with you for life. Oh, no. I didn't know that. I believe, yeah. I don't think there's anything you do. There's no cure. And what happens? You just. 
I think it messes with your immune system or something like oh, that. Oh, that's People unfortunate. People live happy, functioning lives. Right. Yeah. Oh, no, nah, I never heard of that. That's unfortunate. All because you don't wash your legs. You don't want to just throw it and throw some soap down there and scrub it real quick. Just get those dead skin cells. You know, doesn't doesn't hurt. Doesn't hurt. But. Jeez. Oh, that's unfortunate. Oh, man. Okay. Thoughts and prayers. Thoughts. That's all yeah. I got. Yeah, that's all I got. All right. I appreciate you. Thanks. Bye. Mm -hmm. Great and awful at the same time story. Gee whiz. What are you doing, fella? Now you got Lyme disease. What in the world? Can you have lemon Lyme disease? Okay, all right, too much. Let's keep it moving. I was looking for, I was looking for a punchline. That wasn't that wasn't it. Um oh, oh, Jay Lee says it eats the brain. Oh my god. That's that what? How? I gotta do some Googles on that. So the whole, um, I, uh, like I said, I heard uh, Dominique Dawes on the radio this evening. It was a compelling interview. Oh, let me let me pull this up. She made a, a pretty bold statement today that I thought was amazing. Um, so Simone Biles thing, right? Here's my, th I got a theory. I got a theory. Walk with me. She backed out. Uh, what they what they call it, medical injury. And then she kind of came forward with like, wasn't anything medical? You know, I tweaked my ankle on this discount, but that ain't why I'm out. I'm out because I'm really just not all the way in. So I'd rather be out and, uh, you know, and, and, and watch these girls rally around. And then the all around exercise, she was like, all right, I'm out, out. I just got to protect my peace, right? Big discussion now. Like in the history books, 20 years from now, we, we're going to be like, we're going to see this these last few couple years, maybe, as a, as a real turning point in humanity. I'll go so far as to say, uh, whereas you can point to in, in in the future, you could point to back in the history where a hey, this this period of time is when people started thinking differently about certain shit. I think we're in one of those times right now. You know how you can read and be like. All right, we're reading today about the Harlem Renaissance. And what's the Harlem Renaissance? Oh, it's where people, you know, the music started being different. People started vibing a different way, started driving a, a different way and, and dressing and thought process. And, you know, thinkers came forward and blah, blah, blah. But during the Harlem Renaissance, wasn't nobody like, hey, hey, guess what? What's today? You know what today is? The second anniversary of the Harlem Renaissance. We in the middle of the Renaissance, nigga. Like, that didn't happen. So, you know... <laughs> You're not acknowledging it while it's in it. But I think we're in a time where in the future we're going to look back and see that there was a shift, if you will, a paradigm shift in the thought process. All right. So that being said, there's a current argument, debate between people who think mental toughness is supposed to look a certain way. And we're seeing it, that, that discussion being played out in the sports world, professional and otherwise. And so with with recently with, uh, you know, Naomi as Osaka taking front stage and I was even reminded um, that uh, uh, your man, uh, Michael Phelps, he, his his battle was public with anxiety and all that, all because he got caught with the weed. But he came forward and said that's why he used to smoke or whatever. So we've seen a real shift in athletes. And now the comparison is being made unfairly um, to athletes from an era back in the day where things were done differently. And the reason why I say it's an unfair comparison, because first of all, how are you going to scrutinize and criticize a, a, a generation of athletes, the athletes now, today, who were raised with options and choices and, you know, uh, 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 emphasis on per personal expression and individuality. Like, they were, they were raised differently. Like, y'all raised them different. Y'all. And then they get to a certain age and they exercise the way they, 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 they know how to. And you're going to compare them to a generation or two generations before who weren't raised that way. Like, that don't even make sense. You're comparing a current M uh, NFL player to a generation that didn't even play with face masks on their helmets. Like they didn't even know any better. Part of the training regiment was to run face first into a brick wall. And then now somebody do something now, um, you know, that's, that's less than. And, and usually it's not tough and it's not everybody's a baby. We're raising the generation of baby. There was this one guy, I'm not even going to give him no juice. But today he, on his podcast, he was looking for a viral moment. He got it. 
but he was really going off on Simone Biles and and Naomi Osaka and and you know lightweight on athletes of this generation who are now focusing on their mental health because the previous generations one didn't know how to and two were not allowed to like knock it off and and plus beyond that like this whole thing this whole thing everything is not racial this whole thing is racial get 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 out of here you you expect and and you know they complain and they you know they um, they don't want to take the podium. They probably don't want to stand for the anthem, and they were going to do the black fist and all this. You like these these critics, like real live pundits and scrutinizers and analysts and commentators. It's like real live. You you expected the summer we had twenty twenty. You you going to discount somebody's love for their country because they don't show it the way you do. Hey, man, knock it off. Y'all a bunch of buffoons out here. Uh, so anyway, so Simone Biles, right? She backs out. I got a theory. Uh, Dominique Dawes came out in support of her. Let's let, let's go to that first. And I see, I'm going to go to the phone in a second. Uh, let's go to that first. This is her Facebook. Very, very deep. I like when people come out and cosign. Uh, she got a picture of her and like Allie Raisman and uh, Gabby Douglas, Simone Biles. She say, uh, these beautiful ladies pictured with me are all Olympic gymnasts, gold medalists. They are solid, smart, and gifted women. They are future of uh, USA gym, uh, gymnastics off the floor and will lead the next generation of gymnasts the right way, the healthy way. What Simone Biles just did by bowing out of the Olympics gracefully showed a lot of maturity, courage, and above all, humility. Critics are everywhere and have their own opinions, but I've known the pressures this young woman has faced and all the expectations that are laid upon her. They're very real and extremely daunting. She's handled it all with dignity and class. I've been on media outlets all day today about her uh, decision, and my story hasn't wavered once. She needs to focus on herself and her mental health above getting more gold medals. Period. I'm glad this generation of gymnasts has the will and the gravitas to speak up when something's not right, unlike we were taught in the 80s and 90s as robotic gymnasts who were blackballed and sidelined if we even tried to voice our opinion on anything. Well done, ladies, and well done, Simone Biles. That's Dominic Dawes. But she was spilling the tea. She was talking about the Larry Nasser situation. Oh, let me get this off the screen before I keep talking. She was talking about the Larry Nasser situation. She was just talking about the culture in gymnastics. Not even, you know, sports. She's just talking about, oh, gymnastics. And how they used to be, you know, penalized for 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 showing anything less than than thorough and toughness or or speaking out against the practices and procedures and she she brought up a hell of a point she was talking about the uh 96 olympics which i was at and um she said you remember the moment what what's the moment that you remember this was this joint this joint hit me she said what's the moment you remember of g- women's gymnastics in 1996 in atlanta and the host was like carrie Strug. yes she was like you remember the girl doing a vault On a broken ankle. You chose, she said, we, we were programmed and brainwashed. She said, nobody in their right mind would do that. Knowing what you know now and and all this other sacrifice, walking straight for the rest of your life for no medal. After, after, you know, this coach is this in jail. Larry Nassar uh, sexually abused like 200 Olympians. And she said, the moment you remember is somebody doing a vault on a broken ankle. I was like, wow, that's heavy. All right, let me go back to uh, Studio G. Oh, uh, Mr. Clarkson, what's good? Oh, did I get him? Hold on. Let's go live. Yo. Hey, what's going on? So I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to push and say that we were shown what it meant for someone to take mental wellness in 1994. Okay. And I'm saying this is Jordan left professional sports. I'm sorry, Jeffrey, because I don't acknowledge him by that. Oh, okay. when Jeffrey left when Jeffrey left to play baseball. So yes. I'm saying that the same social grace that the sports fan and the sports god gave Jeffrey, I have a really big issue that Simone is not receiving the same social grace. Well, well and 
I got pushback in on that. Some, in certain, I'm saying in certain in certain aspects. I I've, I've seen sadly many black folks go, "Oh, that's whack. You whack for that." And I'm going, "Really? Like, you know, this girl could push herself to injury and it's like I'm not sure if I'm really cool with the fact of her doing what? Just so I can chant USA? Right. She's worth $90 million. We good, fam. Yeah, right. I've seen enough. Yeah. All right, let me give you a quick, <laughs> quick, quick, <laughs> quick bu- uh, pushback on the Jordan take because I heard that take several times today. But the thing is, okay. the difference in Jordan, it was not framed that way then. It was not framed that way. Right. It, you know, he lost his father, check. And you like, oh, I need some time away from basketball. It was not framed as a mental health break. Now, because mental health is a buzz conversation, it's framed that way. And then you got half of the population who are unfamiliar and think that, that you know, these athletes are here for our amusement. And they're, 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 right. they're here for us to, to be, you know, uh, to be objectified by us in the world. And then you got the other half of people who, you know, uh, everything is a is a mental health scenario. So so those people are at odds. So it's framed li- right. differently. But her, you know, here's my theory. I'm gonna give you my theory before for, before we peel out of here. Now I'm gonna, I'm gonna see what you think about it. Sure. All right, unpopular opinion. Something she said made me think. She said, and you okay. know, and I was hoping that you know the girls would step up. And they did what they needed to do, and they they got their medal. Maybe it's her, without being political and without being controversial, showing the world how much she's needed. I'm going to take a break. I'm I'm going to take a break. You got it. You got it. I've been been catching a lot of scrutiny. No diss to y'all, because I know y'all capable, but I'm going to show you I am the gold medal. So I'm going I'm to sit this one out. Do your best. I'll clap for you. You know what I'm saying? And, and what they get? I don't know. The silver. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, would, I would want to agree with you all in if she wasn't Aaron Rodgers. There's nothing about her that comes across to me, her being that... Um, I, I want to say petty, but know? that's not. But it's not she, petty though. Very, it's not petty. All right, look. So look at the whole in totality. The Olympics. This is a bum ass Olympics. We're a year late. Are you? Are you trying to go ahead? I'm listening. Go ahead. Bro. Year late. No family and friends. No fans. Just bullshit ass beds that we're sleeping on. Uh, the black girls in the pool couldn't get the uh, couldn't get the cap approved. She carry Richardson at home. Oh, but y'all, y'all done did all this, you know, put all these infractions on these black women, but y'all want me to be the face of it? No, nah, I'm good. Because y'all ain't, mm. nah, I'm good. Y'all ain't right. So since y'all don't want to do right, I'll show you how the value, I should, let me, I got to show you better than I can tell you my value. Here's my value. Gold medal. That's my theory. So you're, you're, you're saying Simone Biles basically David Ruffin, the temptation. In 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 a way, without without being malicious. <laughs> without being malicious, though. You know what I'm saying? Because her, her statement is not to her girls. She knew what they were capable of. Her statement is to the world. Like Naomi Osaka's statement was to the world. It was like, hey, hey, look here, man. I'm not gonna sit here in front of people who never even played tennis asking me why I have a bad game today. You don't know what I was dealing with to have that bad game that I had. But that's the question you're going to ask? I, I'm not, I, I'm not even going to put myself in front of you for you to even ask. I'm good. I'll see you later. You see what I'm saying? Like, I think so that they're, they're smartening so up. The awareness is at a high level. Interesting. Yeah, that's my theory. That's, 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 a, that's a very, very interesting take. A very, very interesting take. I don't, I don't think that she would do that um i don't i don't see her doing that because there's i i've had i don't have enough breadcrumbs and the interviews that she's given her talk of you know pride of being an all-around medalist of defending her championship to do this i think this is a tough decision for her and after hearing someone explain the tizzies in an interview and then talking to one of my homegirls that uh does gymnastics she was like 
oh yeah, if you get that junk, you got to sit down. She's the equivalent of you being drunk and thinking you can backflip. I'm okay. like, oh no, I don't think that's cool. okay. Sure. Here, here, here's another bread. Here's another breadcrumb, and I sure. and I'll let you go. Um, remember the move that they banned because she's the right. only one yeah. that can do it. Right. That's that's enough break. That's fuel for me. That's enough fuel for me. Oh y'all going? Uh, oh y'all can change the rules because I because I can do some. I was planning on bringing that to Tokyo. Now you said I can't. I can't do that because no one else can do it. Okay. Check. Yeah. Yeah. And thank you. Wow. Yeah. I'll let you go on that. All right. Let's go. Uh, let's go live to our New York bureau chief uh, on remote uh, location, John Watson, all fun and games. What's good with you? What's up with you, fam? Hey. <clears throat> hey, so I don't want to be repetitive, but I'm co-signing. I may be co-signing in a slightly different direction. Okay. That okay. Simone Biles, a great American hero, if she is, in fact, you know, suffering from a little bit of disorientation, she knows her game is going to be weak. And as a great leader, she says, you know what? If I keep on keeping on, we're not going to get nothing because my scores are going to continue to drop. Y'all got this. Okay. Y'all go get it, right? Okay. And then, and then if Team USA goes and gets it, Wins the gold medal without her, Simone Biles, great leader, great sacrifice. You know what I'm saying? She took herself out for the betterment of the team, blah, blah, blah. She's on the cover of every magazine because she, she made the right call, mm. right? Mm. But because they got the silver, you know what I'm saying? Selfish. What is she doing? She could have muscled through. Uh, uh, you know what I'm saying? She, she, she could have, you know... Uh, 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 you know, held out and, and tried her best and blah, 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 because they didn't accomplish what they could have or should have. Okay. Okay. Let, you know let, what I'm let me, let me give you a little something for that. Um, I don't know the mathematical calculations of how that works, uh -huh. but I, I, I would doubt that any of her shortcomings, if she'd have stayed in, would have put the, had them anywhere less than silver. I, don't I mean, think so. we don't know that because if she's mm. feeling the if she if she, but but if she's feeling the decline, you don't know how far that decline is gonna go. As I, I, don't, I don't think you she's feeling. That? I don't think she was feeling the decline. Oh come on! I don't, I don't think she was feeling the decline. Oh no. come on! Like, also, she's not. She's infallible. She's infallible. She's not no, what what I'm saying is she she's she's uh no no she she can be off. Um. See, that's no. the problem right there. Why can't she just, why can't it actually be that she's just off and having a bad go and having a bad week? Well, no, no, I'm, I'm for that. And what I'm saying is her really saying that, you know, I, I don't, I don't feel the pressure. Like y'all, this is, I'm the only one you're talking about because there's no one else here. There's no one else here. Mm -hmm. So, and, and I have to answer every question about everything else. Everything, how you feeling? This and, and this and the fans and this. I got to think about all of that because the news cycle is so aggressive. Like I, I'm 24 now. I, Larry Nassar done went to jail. He done. He done. He violated all of us. You know, we we we're not right. talking enough about that. And and y'all just want to talk this. And then the the, the my homegirl in the swimming, she can't wear the cap to cover her natural hair. And and then the 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 other thing. And then the, all. All of that, and on top of that, and what if she actually has the twisties or the whatever the hell they call it, and she's like, "Yo, man, I can't, I can't do it all, and and have an ailment." Fam. But but yes, but that's what I'm saying. I, I and I feel it was more added to the decision, and and I y'all go ahead, y'all got it. I'm yeah. I need to protect my people, go but that's what I'm. That, yeah, that's right. what I'm saying. But it is. It's. I think it's more about protecting peace and showing her value all in the same swoop. I think that's what, right. what led to the what decision. I'm saying the end line would be, as opposed to, to to the negativity that she's getting, that if same decision, but the team goes on, you know, it, it drives the team and motivates them to win it for her. She's the new kipper, and you know what I'm saying, and they get the gold. Then she made a great decision and. They, you know what I'm saying? They she made sent, a sacrifice for the team and pulled herself out. You they, know what I'm saying? they sent Carrie Shrug. I was in the building. They sent Carrie Shrug in front yeah. of the world to vault on a broken ankle. And she didn't even have to. And she didn't even have to. 
Right. So this is this is that this is that awakening. They was already good. Yeah, they was already good. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. So hey, listen, it's plausible. It's plausible. Yeah, it's plausible. Uh, Before you before you uh, bump me out, um, um, watch that if you if you haven't, good people, watch uh, the Naomi Osaka documentary on Netflix. It's like a three part oh series maybe okay. like 45 minutes a pop it's really i'm a fan now i'm a fan just okay off of, you weren't before really just, i mean i wasn't not but like you know when when you and, and this was pre you know her making the uh the announcement in regards to not doing the, the press and all that kind of stuff okay um I, I feel like it was filmed oh no it's definitely filmed pre and post covid probably around about until um June or so, June, July of last year. Okay. So it was a couple months before COVID began and then ends up around midsummer of last year, just um, around about protest time, all that kind of stuff. Oh, okay. Right? Uh, yeah. So dope. it's just a dope inside to, you know, her from pretty much for the most part from her lens. It's, it's go, so, it goes so far as to like literally take just phone camera footage that she decided to give them when she was on her own personal time or whatever. Mm-hmm. And it's just, you know, it gives you insight on it. It's like, okay, like, okay, I, I you know, get a little bit more appreciation for the, for the person. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So What's it called? It it's not long. It li- it's literally Naomi Osaka. It's just like, it's just the document is just named Naomi Osaka. So if you check okay. it out, they like three, three forty five minute, you know, pieces or whatever. So it's good. Yeah. I watched it this weekend on, on uh-huh. quick. There it is. All right, our, our, our New York Bureau Chief, uh, John Watson from All Funny Games. We'll see you Friday. All right, champ. All right, y'all. Hey, there it is. That's the show. It's been fun. Good to see the newcomers. Uh, it's kind of sort of what you get. It could be, you know, it's a little different every day. But uh, on behalf of everybody that made the show possible, and uh, big love to our guest, uh, Bobby Chad Menzen Caviar. Operation Future, LLC. And uh, everybody that called in and all that. Shout out to you. Let's get this money up for the 50 50 raffle on Fridays. Let's go live show. Send the money, $5 a slot. You get on the money wheels. It's like the pot, the kitty right now is like $3. We can't make no moves until we get to at least minimum 75 in the pot. So just make sure you put slots or pots in the notes section of the Cash App. $5 a slot. I want 10 slots. I want two slots. Put the rest in the pot, whatever. 50 50 goes half of the pie goes to you, the half goes to the other half goes to the production cost of the show. Um, follow All Fun and Games, the Friday version of the show at LGL underscore All Fun and Games. <laughs> LeVar Burton, what we're looking for is games. All right, there it is, y'all. We'll see y'all Friday, man. Be safe, don't do too much, stay stress free. That's all I. I don't care if it is a closet, you still looking mad efficient.